In the previous recording, we had discussed how to find the probability that a number from 1 to 100 could be a multiple of a 3 or a multiple of 8. I also asked you a question about how, what is the probability that a number chosen at random from 1 to 100 is a multiple of 7. I hope you figured it out. Uh, the answer to that is 14 upon 100 because there are 14 multiples of 7 from 1 to 100. So um, the answer is 14 out of 100 or 0 0.14. Now, we're going to take a step forward and discuss um, slightly advanced concepts, uh, not too advanced at the moment, uh, in, in probability. Um, let's go back to drawing marbles from a bag. So let's say you have 30 marbles in a bag broken up as 5 red, 10 blue and 15 green for a total of 30 marbles. And the question requires you to draw two marbles, not one, but two marbles at random. And it says that the drawing that you have to do is without replacement. Now, the phrase without replacement means that once you've taken out a marble, you do not put it back in the bag. So every time you draw a marble, the total number of marbles reduces by one. And remember, we are drawing two marbles. Now the question says, what is the probability that both marbles are red? Okay, so the way to handle this question would be to ask yourself, what are the different ways in which you can get two red marbles? So the first marble and the second marble. Now in this case, the first will have to be red. The second will also have to be red. And for you to win this bet, you have to get them both right. So it's an AND condition. And this is very important that you ask yourself if it's an AND condition or an OR condition. So the probability that the first marble is red, uh, that is going to be 5 out of 30. Because there are 5 red marbles and the total number of marbles is 30. The probability that the second marble is red is going to be 4 out of 29. Why 4 out of 29? Well, if you have been successful in drawing a red marble in the first case, then the second marble, um, the chance of that being red goes down because you won't have five red marbles available. You will now have only four red marbles available. And similarly, the total number of marbles would have gone down from 30 to 29. Because there's an AND condition, we put a multiplication sign in the middle. And you solve it. So you get, when you simplify this, you'll get 1 upon 6 times 4 upon 29. And this reduces to 2 out of 87. This is the chance that both the marbles will be red. Now let's uh, try another example based on the same data. So let's say the question says that you are again drawing two marbles at random without replacement and the question says that you have to figure out the probability that the first marble is red and the second is blue. So that should be quite straightforward. So you have to figure out the ways in which you can make this happen. And there's really only one way to make this happen. The first has to be red, the second has to be blue, and it's an AND condition. So the chance that the first marble is red is going to be 5 out of 30. The chance that the second is blue is going to be 10 out of... Now remember, this is without replacement. So the total number of marbles will not be 30. It would have gone down to 29. And you multiply this, and you simplify. So you should get 1 out of 6 into 10 out of 29 which is, if you simplify this further, you get 5 upon 87. This is the answer to this particular question. Since there was only one way to make this happen, the first one has to be red and the second has to be blue, uh, this is all we do. We figure out the probability of the individual cases and we multiply them and we get our answer. Now let's say the question says, oh, that you need to draw two marbles at random without replacement. 
and the question was to figure out the probability that one marble is red and one is blue. Now, again, you'll have to figure out the number of ways that you can make this happen. In this case, you may have the first one to be red and the second one is blue. But this is not the only way that you can make this happen. The second way that you can make this happen is that the first one is blue and the second one is red. Now, this is different from the previous question in the way that in the previous question it was very specific that the first had to be red and the second had to be blue. So if you had gotten the first one to be blue, you would have lost the bet. But in this case, the bet is that the first has, that, that, that one is supposed to be red and one is supposed to be blue. It can happen in any order. The order is not specified. This actually makes it more likely for you to win a bet. So what you would need to do is figure out the probability of each of these individual cases. Now the probability that the first is red is pretty easy. That's 5 out of 30. We just did this in the previous case. And the probability that the second is blue is 10 out of 29. Remember, it's without replacement. This simplifies to 5 out of 87. We just saw that. And similarly, uh, the second event that the first is blue and the second is red. So for the first to be blue, the probability would be 10 out of 30. And the second is red would be 5 out of 29. And if you were to simplify this, you would discover that this also comes out to be 5 upon 87. Hence, the chance that you get one red and one blue would be 5 out of 87 for the first possibility, plus 5 out of 87 for the second possibility, making a total of 10 out of 87. So, what we had to do was we had to figure out the different ways in which this could happen, figure out the probability of each of those cases, and then add them up. Okay? This is an important distinction between the previous question and this one. Please make sure that you understand this clearly before you move on to the next example. Now, the same question can be done in a slightly different way. Um, you can actually save yourself time by just figuring out the probability of one possible way of getting this outcome. Uh, the, remember the question was that you have to figure out the probability that you get one red and one blue. So we assume that the first one is red and the second one is blue. Right. So here we go. The first one is red, the second is blue. So the probability that the first is red is going to be 5 out of 30. And the probability that the second one is blue is going to be 10 out of 29. And then we just multiply it by the number of ways of arranging R and B. And the number of ways in which you can arrange the letters R and B is 2 factorial, which is 2 into 1. So, and that's 2. So we therefore multiply this by 2, which will give us the answer 10 upon 87. This way, you can save yourself time. Okay. So I want to give you another example, and I want you to try doing it yourself. Similar data, same data in fact, and the question says, what is the probability that you get one marble as blue and one green? Remember, in this question, I have not specified the order, so you can get it in any order. That would be fine by me. So I want you to think about this question and figure out what the answer is. And in a couple of seconds, I'll also explain to you how to approach this problem again. Right, I hope you've thought about this question and you have gotten some kind of an answer. Now let's see if you figured out the right answer or not. So um, the, the first way that you can make this thing happen is the first marble is blue and the second marble is green. The probability that the first marble is blue is going to be 10 out of 30. And the probability that the second marble is green is going to be 15 out of 29. And because we have two letters, B and G, 
the number of arrangements of b and g is going to be 2 factorial, which is again 2 into 1, which is equal to 2. So you need to multiply this by 2. And the answer that you get would be 10 out of 29. So because the order was not specified, we figured out the priority of one way of getting this particular arrangement that satisfied our requirement, found out the priority of that arrangement, and then multiplied by all the ways in which we could do it, which was 2. And the answer came out to be 10 upon 29. I hope this is clear. So I'm going to make you write down a, a, a three-step process that I uh, like to talk about while approaching questions that in which the order is not specified. So here's the three-step method of solving probability questions in which the order of events is not specified. Step one is write down one possible arrangement of events that satisfy the requirement. Step two is calculate the probability of that specific event. Step 3, multiply the answer of step 2 with the number of arrangements possible of the event written in step 1. This is a very useful three-step process that will help you figure out probabilities of all events in which the order of events is not specified. See you in the next video.